Relive the glorious days of simpler times as the City of Industry's Homestead Museum celebrates its annual Victorian Fair. And salute the heroes of the armed forces as we glimpse authentic uniforms and collectibles at the West Coast Militaria Show on this edition of Out and About. What is it about the Victorian era that appeals to so many people? Everyone tends to always want to think that the earlier times were the better times. Uh -huh. Everybody thinks it's a much simpler time and, and, and that things were better somehow. When ladies see what I dress these girls in, <laughs> they realize that, oh, maybe not so much. They think they want to wear these clothes until they see what the understructures are and how difficult it is. But ladies did not give a whole lot away then either. You've got layers and layers and layers of clothes on which only add to the mystique for men because they're not seeing anything. You don't start to see ankle until 1905. Then you, then you start seeing ankle for the first time in a couple hundred years. So there is a lot of mystique for, for men that goes on behind all these layers and layers and layers of clothes. And I think that's part of it, is that we give away too much today. To return your partner home, grand right and left, finale. The pomp, pageantry, and sheer elegance of a grand historical age comes to life at the Homestead Museum's Victorian Fair to honor and celebrate this much venerated period of history. So the Victorian Fair is something that we hold every other year here at the Homestead Museum, which is a wonderful six-acre site that contains two historic homes and a private cemetery. So we have six acres in which to use the grounds to make the Victorian era come to life through things like fashion shows, music, dance demonstrations and lessons, demonstrators here showing people the art of everything from lace making to straw hat making to photography. Bicycles too, are those big wheeled things, what are they called? <laughs> The high wheel bicyclists, those are among the most popular offerings as you can imagine because people are, are always just so excited to see how people actually climb and descend these high wheel bikes. Uh, I did see some people dancing in front of a, a band. What was the band? That's the Philadelphia Quadrille Band. And they were the dancers were demonstrating waltzes and polkas that would be popular during the Victorian era. And there's a lot of visitor participation, which is always a lot of fun to see. Visitors to the annual Victorian Fair are free to wander about the grounds where vendors fill their tables with the products and goods of the time. The museum's gardens are awash with fragrant blooms and peaceful fountain displays and visitors take advantage of the serenity by engaging in some authentic Victorian games like this beanbag toss or an early version of table bowling. And a Victorian fashion show showcases just how far we've come when it comes to fashion. My name is Natalie Meyer and I am the costumer here for the Workman Temple Family Homestead. I actually provide the costumes for their living history programs. I am a member of the Costumers Guild West, which is an educational society where we teach at a three-day seminar every year, we teach all aspects of costuming. And so from that society, I've learned a great deal. But in addition to that, I have a huge library. And I just, books are gonna be my downfall. I just keep buying costume books and reading costume books. And so you learn, you can learn a lot. Uh, tell us about uh, today's event. 
This is the Workman Temple Homestead's Victorian days. And as I explained at the beginning of my presentation, the Victorian period actually covers time from 1837 to 1901. And during that time period, there was a lot of shift in fashion silhouette. So what I presented today were the three major silhouettes that transpired during that time period, which is the crinoline, the bustle, and then the very late Victorian, early Edwardian. Earlier I saw you uh, telling the audience uh, that the ladies must sit very, very straight. What's yes. that about? Well, the corsets are steel boned and you've got maybe, I want to say maybe 18 bones in your average corset. So it's it's like it's almost like wearing a bulletproof vest. You're, you're oh, not wow. going to be doing I'm familiar with that. You're yeah. not going to be doing a whole lot of bending when you've got all these steel bones forming your sides. So bending from this which is why when you see in the movies or you see in, in Courier Nice paintings, the gentleman picks up a lady's handkerchief or in the Courier Nice paintings particularly he's putting on her ice skates for her. He's helping her to tie her shoes. You can't bend from the waist once you've got a corset on. There's no bending at the waist. You're going straight down from your knees or you're not going at all. Lots of, lots of ruffle, lots of lace to make the skirt stand out. But it's also... Um, the afternoon's display showcases the amount of clothing that was employed even for the most basic of women's Victorian apparel and why coverage seems to rule over comfort. Well, we see what you're wearing, but how comfortable is it? It's very comfortable. The first time Natalie put me in a corset, she, she put it on and then she started pulling the strings and I went, <gasps> because it pulls you in. But once you're in it, it's very comfortable. It supports your back. It makes you stand up straight. Um, you eat less. There's all kinds of advantages to being in a corset. The hardest part is putting yourself in it. I could never put myself in the corset by myself. Well, just leave it on. <laughs> yeah, I, I've often wanted to because I find myself slouching at work and, oh. you know, this way I would stand up straight. Of course, the Victorian era was not without its detractors, and many a snake oil salesman was quick to take advantage of a public enamored by the newfangled products and services of the time. We wolf down in a hurry because we must rush out and make more money. Dr. Malatesta, who is a, a purveyor of a patent medicine called Kickapoo Indian Sagwa. That sounds familiar for some reason. Uh, I don't think you get that at the local pub, but maybe. No, it was a. It, it is a uh, actual historical uh, patent medicine. It was. Oh. It was extremely popular uh, from the 1850s, and in fact, uh, until the 1920s. Uh, and it was famous because uh, the Kickapoo Indian Sagwa uh, company put on the best medicine shows. Uh, so this medicine probably has some sort of uh, stimulating content, let us say. Mostly alcohol, but. Uh, <laughs> It, it, uh, it was actually one of the least lethal of the uh, patent medicines. Uh, it, it contained no opiates, so there's no, no heroin um, and no cocaine, um, just a little bit of alcohol as, uh, uh, as solvent and preservative, as they like to say. As Dr. Malatesta kicks back a swig of his Kickapoo Indian Sagua, visitors choose to experience the Temple family's Spanish colonial revival residence. The self-guided tours take them through the large residence and enable a glimpse of the lavish lifestyle and amenities that bridge the transition between the Victorian era and the Roaring Twenties. The building that we saw is called La Casa Nueva and it's a 1920 Spanish colonial revival home that was designed by the Temple family in the 1920s. It's got 26 rooms, 11,000 square feet, and everywhere you turn you see something stunning. Was that a, a private residence? Yes, it was the home of Walter Temple and his family, his wife Laura. Unfortunately, she passed away uh, very early in the construction of the house, but they had uh, four living children that saw the completion of the home, and the home was dedicated to her when it was finished. That is a big house, I must say. Yes. Well, how long did it take to build it? The house was built between 1922 and 1927, uh -huh. and uh, as you were 
very smart to note, it's a nice big house the family loved to entertain, so they utilized it often for that purpose. Inside the mansion are many antiques from the time, including the kitchen area where an actual waffle iron is displayed above this unique double sink with an uncharacteristic divider. Outside, a gazebo rises above the grounds amidst a floral garden featuring a variety of desert succulents and pine trees which tower above a peaceful lotus pond that is stocked with colorful koi fish. But with all of the lush beauty cradling these idyllic surroundings, one of the Homestead Museum's most unique features is the authentic cemetery. Home to over a dozen gravestones, the cemetery offers a serene yet solemn contrast to the adjoining estate. The Homestead Museum is something you would never expect to find in a place like the City of Industry. We are a six acre historic site that was once part of a nearly 49,000 acre early California rancho. And here at the museum we focus on Southern California history from 1830 to 1930. And we do that by looking at the experiences of the workmen and temple families who built houses that are still here on the property that people can tour and visit. We also have a variety of programs throughout the year like the Victorian Fair. And the setting is so beautiful with all the trees and flowers and it's, it's a very comfortable place. Yes, we call it our oasis in the city of industry. And I believe that you are actually from this area. I grew up in Hacienda Heights, so this was my local museum and certainly made a great impression on me at a very young age and I'm still so impressed with it today and I'm thrilled to be here working with a great paid and volunteer staff that make events like this possible. To experience the historic Victorian and Spanish colonial revival themes of this early California institution, visit the Homestead Museum, located in the City of Industry, California. When we return, we'll glimpse authentic military collectibles and uniforms spanning generations of warfare. Stay with us as co-host Conrad P. Monty explores the Western Militaria show when Out and About continues. <laughs> 